This is the Camp Wildfire. On November 8, 2018, the fire tore across a rural section of Northern California. It was the deadliest and most destructive fire in California history. It consumed the town of Paradise in a matter of hours, forcing its residents to flee in panic. <laughs> oh, please. An investigation found that the campfire was caused by a line owned by Pacific Gas and Electric, or PG&E. It was the latest in a string of fires that ultimately led the state's largest utility company to file for bankruptcy. But with this bankruptcy, it isn't just shareholders and creditors who have an interest in the future of the company. Millions of Californians rely on the utility to keep the lights on. And some are questioning whether PG&E can be trusted to do that safely and reliably. That's because, according to documents reviewed by the Wall Street Journal, the company knew for years its equipment had the potential to start fires, yet repeatedly delayed the necessary upgrades to make some of its lines safer. This is the story of how PG&E filed for bankruptcy. In 1905, newly incorporated Pacific Gas and Electric was competing with other utilities to electrify Northern California, with power generated high in the Sierra Nevada. A vision of a regional power system was something that really hadn't been tried in too many other places around the world. The predecessors to PG&E built a series of dams, then built long, high-voltage transmission lines across the Central Valley to San Francisco. PG&E emerged really through consolidation of a number of companies to serve more and more parts of Northern California with increasing demands for energy. I wash and dry your clothes, play your radios, I can heat your coffee pot. Remember, just plug in, I'm ready. But safety and reliability issues have plagued the utility since the 90s. In 1996, PG&E settled a multi-million dollar lawsuit alleging it tainted drinking water around Hinkley, California. In 2001, the California energy crisis resulted in rolling blackouts and drove the corporation's utility arm to file for bankruptcy. And in 2010, a PG&E gas pipeline exploded in San Bruno, California, killing eight people. PG&E was placed on federal probation as a result of the explosion to ensure the utility operated safely in the communities it served. And many of those Northern California communities were growing in rural areas. A lot of the residential construction that's occurred over the last several decades has been in what we would call the wildland urban interface. The fringe of the built environment, putting people out into the forest. Since that time, there hasn't been a lot of new construction of the backbone system. Many of the utility's transmission towers were constructed in the first half of the 20th century. Outside of Paradise is a high voltage transmission line owned by PG&E. The 56-mile line, known as the Caribou Palermo, was built in 1921. Its towers and lines tap into a hydroelectric system known as the Stairway of Power. PG&E estimated the mean life expectancy of its high-voltage transmission towers was 65 years old, but the company estimated the average age of all the towers still in service was 68. The oldest towers in the system were 108 years old. Equipment like these high voltage and low voltage lines does fail, but the failure is, is, is low consequence. So you'd have an older transmission line that was nearing the end of its service life and something would break during a big winter storm in the Sierra. And when the storm ended, PG&E crews could go out and fix the line. What's changed is when the power lines fail in California and the consequences of a failure. From 2013 to 2019, a historic drought swept across California, killing millions of trees and greatly increasing the risk of fire. According to a PG&E list obtained by the Wall Street Journal, the Caribou Palermo was one of the grid's worst performing circuits. It also ran through areas that were identified as posing elevated and extreme fire risks. In 2017, PG&E equipment started 18 fires that killed 22 people, according to state fire officials. According to an internal presentation from that same year, the company said it needed a plan to replace its steel structure transmission towers and better manage its equipment to prevent it from causing fires. On the morning of November 8th, 2018, winds picked up before sunrise near Paradise. A hook connecting a power line to a Caribou Palermo tower failed, causing the line to strike the tower and emit sparks that fell to the ground. 
A few minutes later, a PG&E worker spotted a small fire near the tower. That fire grew quickly. Oh my god. By 8 a.m., local officials had given the order to evacuate. By 1045, the fire had overtaken parts of Paradise. Trying to get out of Paradise. This is bad. Oh my god. County 13 is bad. Hey guys! By 6 p.m., the fire had completely consumed the town. In the aftermath, the local sheriff's office said bodies were found in vehicles, most likely of people who were trying to escape the fire. Anthropologists and a forensic dentist were tasked with identifying human remains that sometimes consisted only of a few bone fragments or teeth. For PG&E, the destruction caused by the campfire was an existential threat. The utility faced thousands of wildfire claims seeking damages for, amongst other things, wrongful death, personal injury, and property damage. From October 2018 to January 2019, PG&E's market value slid from about $25 billion to $9 billion. By declaring bankruptcy, the utility's strategy was to fold these claims into a bankruptcy proceeding, allowing the company to negotiate settlements with all of its creditors, including the fire victims. A Wall Street Journal investigation revealed the company knew that 57 of the steel towers on the Caribou Palermo line needed hardware replaced, and another 49 towers needed to be replaced entirely before the campfire. In 2013, PG&E told federal regulators it had a $30 million plan to replace equipment on the Caribou Palermo line, but it repeatedly delayed the project for five years. It was slated to begin as late as June 2018, but it didn't happen. The utility released a statement in response to the journal's reporting saying the scheduled work wasn't maintenance related and that the tower that malfunctioned before the campfire wasn't slated to be part of the project. PG&E later acknowledged in federal court it had long known that its high voltage lines could fail and trigger fires, but said that such fires have historically been relatively rare. I think the utilities in California recognize that they're operating in a different world today and that if they cause fires, they won't have a business. In December 2019, state investigators found a dozen violations the utility had committed in maintaining its transmission lines and towers. PG&E acknowledges it still has work to do. Since the campfire, it has inspected all its towers, lines, and substations. It identified 1,200 immediate safety risks and another 10,000 less urgent repairs and is making fixes. It is also committed to sharing the results of its inspections with state regulators and the public. PG&E has also permanently retired the Caribou Palermo line. Well, I think in the long run, all of the utilities need to harden their grid. In the short run, and maybe even the medium term, PG&E is also going to be turning off the power. Since 2018, PG&E has initiated several weather-related power shutoffs to prevent its equipment from starting more fires, including one that cut power to nearly 750,000 homes and businesses. PG&E's future remains uncertain. The utility has reached a $13.5 billion settlement with fire victims, but faces a major hurdle in appeasing the state of California, which has raised the specter of a public takeover if PG&E doesn't enact certain reforms. If Pacific Gas and Electric is unable to secure its own fate and future, then the state will prepare itself as backup for a scenario where we do that job for them. People expect that their power is going to be on all the time and that the system will not cause them to be afraid. But that's kind of where we live right now in Northern California. And until that changes, I think there is gonna be pushed for much greater oversight of a company. I think that's a challenging environment for a utility to operate in, particularly one that's trying to get out of bankruptcy.